And so finally, I share with you something so beautiful about the word ilah. It was in Texas many years ago that a, that a missionary I was speaking to, um, I happened to meet him on a flight. He came to me and told me, our God is love. But your God, he's not love. Because, you know, Jesus is love. And I said, where did you learn that our God is not love? You don't have, you have Allah. And you have ilah, but you don't have love. You know? And I said, okay, well, I could show him, you know, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودُ Quran says Allah is extremely loving. He says that. But even in the word ilah, what people don't know, the Arabs are really a remarkable people. The ancient Arabs used to have 14 different words for love. How many did I say? 14 different words for love. And so for each one of them, they had a description. The last one, number 14, is when love kills you. Number 14 is the kind of love that you just, just ah, I'm just dead. Okay? The love that kills. And you don't wish that on anyone. But the one before that is actually called Al-Wala. And Al-Wala is a kind of love, they describe it, يُعَبَّرُ عَنْ غِيَابِ السَّعَادَةَ بِغِيَابِ الْمَحْبُوبِ They say, when the one you love isn't there, you can't be happy. That love, that when they're there, you're happy, and when they're not there, you can't be happy. And the word for that in Arabic is wala. And wala is argued by many grammarians as the origin of the word ilah. From wila, it actually becomes muqallab, the, the, the wow became alif and became ilah. In other words, there is no genuine love and there's no real happiness in life that a human being can find with Allah absent from their heart. Happiness cannot exist. Joy cannot exist. Love cannot exist without Allah in the heart. That's part of the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And that's the Allah we're calling on when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How often we, we think of Allah as the one who punishes and the one who's gonna get you. I mean, we teach kids that, it's so scary. We teach our children things like, don't eat that cookie, Allah's gonna be very angry. And I can guarantee you, if that child died, Allah will not be angry and not ask him about a cookie. I can guarantee you. Allah, you're angry, Allah isn't angry with a child. Not over any cookies. They're, they're, they're ma'soom. They're not going to be questioned about what they do. But we teach people early on, even Muslims teach Muslims early on that Allah is angry or Allah will punish or Allah is watching and you better watch out and you better fear Allah. Yes, fearing Allah is part of the equation. But where does Qur'an begin with? Does Qur'an begin with scaring us about Allah or making us love the one who gave us this life? Making us fall in love with Him and making us feel like we will always be alone without Him. There are people that are literally afraid to turn to Allah because they're too scared to remember Him. Our fear should be overrun by our love for Him and our desperation for Him. And I pray that this is the month that you and I find that love, that genuine love for Allah Azza wa Jal. That when we call on Allah's name and we say, Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that we recognize how much Allah is giving us out of His love. How much He's taking care of us. How many of His names are being utilized by us and we don't even know. We don't even know. May Allah Azza wa make us a people who say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim with their, with their tongues and they also say it with their hearts. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala 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 wa rah